In July of 2021, the European Union announced a proposal that would ban the sale of new gas-powered vehicles on the continent by 2035. The full EU proposal was this, cut CO2 emissions from cars 55% versus 2021 levels by 2030, then 100% by 2035. Let me do a little bit of math here, okay? Take 100% of gas cars that are sold now, subtract 55%, okay, that's 45% left, then subtract 100% of that, Okay, the math checks out. That's 0% of cars left. If approved, the new law would make it damn near impossible for auto manufacturers to sell gas or diesel cars in 27 countries. While European environmentalists and politicians largely cheered this news, blowback from some automakers was swift. And it was Italian supercar manufacturers in particular who said, on this episode of Wheelhouse, what does Europe's ban on gas-powered cars mean for companies like Ferrari and Lamborghini, for the supercar in general? And how far might the Italian government go to stop it? Big thanks to ShipStation for sponsoring today's video. It's the holidays, which means it's time for eggnog, fire pits, and throwing snow at your brother-in-law, Jeff. Unless you're running an online store. Then, it's more about packing boxes and managing inventory and dealing with frustrated customers wondering if their gifts will arrive in time. And no amount of snow you throw at Jeff will make that feel more festive. Maybe you should use ShipStation. It's a holiday miracle that'll help with the hassle of shipping out your holiday orders, leaving you more time to run your business or enjoy your time off. We have friends who use ShipStation and it's super easy to use and really does turn shipping into the easiest part of running an online store. You can import your sales from Amazon, eBay, Etsy, or your own website. Plus, you'll get special access to discounting shipping rates that are usually reserved for the largest companies. Sick, dude. So give yourself the gift of less stress and go to shipstations.com donut to get a 60 day free trial. That's right, that's enough to cover the entire holiday rush. So you can just sit back and keep throwing snow at Jeff. Come here, come here, son. These proposed regulations are part of an ambitious new effort by the European Union to address climate change called the 2030 Climate Target Plan. Developed by the European Commission, which is the EU government's executive branch, its goal is to reduce Europe's overall carbon footprint by 55% compared to 1990 levels. Other aspects of the plan include planting 3 billion trees across Europe and increasing renewable energy production by 40% over the next nine years. This is stuff that frankly needs to get done. Also included are several proposals to increase the practicality and sales of electric vehicles. One law would require European countries to install public charging stations no more than 60 kilometers apart on major roads by 2025. The plan also estimates up to 120 billion euros will need to be spent on chargers across the EU by 2040. But the combustion engine ban is arguably the most impactful part, or at least the most visible. In addition to the huge ramifications for enthusiasts and collectors, car companies provide direct or indirect jobs to 13.8 million Europeans. That's more Europeans than have ever bought Europe's best-selling album ever, Celine Dion's 10 times platinum, Let's Talk About Love. So it's actually a little surprising that several automakers responded to the ban by saying, meh, whatever, my heart will go on. Yes, the overall response was a mix of positive and negative. The ban would actually be no big deal for Volkswagen, which had already announced it would stop selling gas cars in Europe by 2035. Similarly, Stellantis, the newish multinational corporation that owns Dodge and Jeep, among others, also previously announced a 30 billion euro investment in electrifying their offerings. And Ford's European division has said that it will feature an all electric lineup by 2030. So see, not a huge deal for them. However, the European Automobile Manufacturers Association went to bat for combustion engines. The industry trade organization announced their opposition to the ban by saying that outlawing any specific technology is not a rational way forward and that the climate plan should include gas, electric, hybrid, and hydrogen powered vehicles all playing a role. This resistance foreshadowed the Italian government's eventual response. More than anything else, the Italian motor industry is defined by a rich tradition of sports cars. Ferrari, Lamborghini, Maserati, Alfa Romeo, and Pagani all make a lot of cars with big engines that go So, unlike their counterparts in Germany, where the auto industry is dominated by the wide variety of brands under Volkswagen's huge corporate umbrella, Italy's car industry is unusually reliant on spirited but inefficient gas guzzlers. Unfortunately, the proposed timeline for the gas engine sundown is extra difficult to meet this kind of luxury car maker. There's almost no way around it. 
powerful gas engines mean above average pollution. Plus, because these kinds of cars are generally produced in such low volumes, it makes much less financial sense for these companies to recalibrate their entire production facilities and assembly processes. Ferrari is probably the most prominent of these brands due to its esteemed history and the fact that it's the only major Italian car manufacturer not currently owned by a global conglomerate. Ferrari has also been particularly slow to embrace electrification. The company recently announced plans for an all-electric vehicle by 2025, which surprised observers since it actually moved up their previous timeline. By contrast, the fully electric Porsche Taycan was announced in 2015 and has been on road since 2019. More than 20,000 of them were delivered to consumers last year, and this year it outsold the 911 and the Tesla Model S. Meanwhile, Lamborghini's chief technology officer, Maurizio Reggiani, recently told The Drive that, quote, for us, it's fundamental to continue to use a V12 engine. The company has committed to cutting its CO2 emissions by half by 2025, but appears primarily focused on developing plug-in hybrids, which would also be illegal if the EU proposal is adopted. Interesting. With all that in mind, it makes sense that Italy's government would be worried about the future financial health of sports car companies, particularly those that are embedded into the fabric of Italian culture. Still, the same could probably be said for a lot of industries, right? I can't imagine that this climate plan is very kind to the smokestack industry, for example, but I haven't heard about any governments lobbying the EU on behalf of chimney sweeps. Yet that's exactly what Italy did for their car companies. This is where a guy named Roberto Cingolani comes in. In February of 2021, Cingolani was appointed to be the Minister of Ecological Transition by Italy's new Prime Minister. This newly created cabinet position is in charge of Italian energy and environmental matters. And in September, Cingolani made headlines when he announced that Italy was in talks with the European Union to shield supercar makers, Ferrari and Lamborghini in particular, from the gas engine phase out. Cingolani's argument is that Ferrari and Lamborghini combined to sell around 16,500 vehicles in 2020, a small fraction of the millions of cars sold every year. Just a tiny fraction, just a, the tiniest of pie slices. That makes their collective CO2 output much smaller than other kinds of vehicles, as well as a fraction of what other big polluters like the meat industry produce. This is all true, but there's another variable which was conveniently left out of Italy's announcement. Roberto Cingolani, Italy's head environmental honcho, used to work for, drum roll please. Uh, you know what, that's not big enough. Add some timpani in there, SR. Uh, maybe some wind chimes? Great, epic, but whimsical. Roberto Cingolani used to work for Ferrari. He was on their board of directors. If you think that sounds like a conflict of interest, I'm with you. But then again, my interests conflict all the time. Like, I like Pop-Tarts and toaster strudels, so what do I know? Cingolani actually had to resign his seat on Ferrari's board in order to take the job as Minister of Ecological Transition. Prior to his stint at Ferrari, he was chief technology officer for an Italian weapons manufacturer called Leonardo. He sounds like a real tree hugger to me. Perhaps unsurprisingly, Cingolani almost immediately found himself in conflict with Italian climate activists who have been concerned with his calls to slow the clean energy transition, particularly his support of natural gas. Probably didn't help when he gave a speech saying that, quote, extremist ideological environmentalists dot 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 are worse for the climate catastrophe. To be fair, Cingolani also reiterated Italy's commitment to reducing emissions even as he called for the supercar exception. It's also unclear if Italy's request was an independent government decision or a result of lobbying by the companies. Hmm, <laughs> I wonder which. Either way, it's clear that Cingolani sees climate change as a problem that can be solved while also maintaining the Italian tradition of thick booty engine blocks. Like the reaction to the ban proposal itself, response to Italy's proposition was mixed. Supercar enthusiasts were grateful to get a lifeline, though some have wondered about the specific inclusion of Ferrari and Lambo without any mention of Maserati or any other similar companies. The French and German governments have also made noise about keeping the full ban, but pushing back the timeline. But Porsche CEO, Oliver Bloom, has publicly campaigned against the Italian exception, saying that every automaker must contribute to the fight against climate change. It probably doesn't hurt, that he's so far ahead of the competition on electrification. And remember, Porsche also recently gained access to Remac EV tech from the Bugatti deal I talked about a few episodes ago. Ironically, Lamborghini could also access that tech since they're part of the same corporate hierarchy as Porsche, they just don't want to for some reason. So what's next? Both the gas engine ban and the supercar carve out are just proposals for now. And it could be up to two years until it's actually voted on. Even if the ban passes, there would still be more than a decade until the sundown actually arrives. So there's no need to plan for a funeral of the Aventador yet. 
It is worth noting that this kind of haggling over details and exceptions is fairly typical for the EU legislative process. At the same time, it's also worth noting that the future of the human race isn't generally hanging in the balance. And that brings us to the moral question lurking underneath all the shiny cars and political machinations. Does being rich give someone more right to pollute? because that's essentially what Italy is proposing here. Under Roberto Cingolani's plan, people who can afford to drop 200K on a Lamborghini would get to operate under different rules than everyone else. As much as we all love the roar of a 12 cylinder engine, is that really fair? Italy's proposal also might have ramifications for other aspects of the auto industry. If there's an exception written for luxury cars, then it might increase the chances that motorsport organizations request something similar. And down the road, guidelines for classic cars could eventually be up for discussion as well. It's a whole can of SpaghettiOs. Unfortunately, there's no easy solution. And like it or not, the auto industry will have to answer some big existential questions over the next decade or so. But luckily, I know the perfect guy to do it. A rich dude who used to build missiles. Good luck, Roberto. Hey friend, I know where you're at. You forgot to get a gift for the donut fan in your life and it's too late for anything to be shipped. Well, you're in luck because donut media gift cards are a thing and you can get them in some phenomenal increments. I'm talking $25, $50, $75, $100, $150, and if you want to do something crazy like $7,500, give me a call and we'll work something out. The Donut Media gift cards are 100% digital. They don't rely on the old school guy on a horse delivering things, which is how I assume things still get to people. And each of them are designed after an 80s credit card, which is a genius idea that I came up with in literally three seconds. So head on over to donutmedia.com and pick up your perfect stocking stuffer today. Thanks for watching Wheelhouse. Uh, support the channel by hitting that like button or checking out our merch if you'd like. Follow us at Donut Media on all social media. Follow me at Nolan J. Sykes. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button if you like so you never miss another video. Be kind, don't throw your battery in the ocean. I'll see you next time.